Hi everyone, Luke here from Apple Online Academy. Today let's talk about the red, yellow and green buttons. But what is there to talk about? I use this every day. It's red to quit, yellow to minimize and green to maximize. Yes, and that's wrong. If I surprise you with a function you didn't know about these buttons, let me know about it by leaving a like on this video. Let's start with the red button. The red button simply closes the current window. In many applications a window is equivalent to a document. So here in pages, by clicking the red button, I will close the document. Now let's say I have multiple documents open and I want to close them all at once. You can do that if you hold the option key down and click one of the red buttons and all of the documents windows will close. Now it's important to note that on a Mac, when you close a document, it doesn't necessarily quit the app. This is different than it is on Windows. So here I've got one window, one document open in Pages. If I click the close button, notice that Pages is still running here on top. The idea here is that you should be able to close that window, but still continue using the app. Maybe create new document. In other video I explain the differences between quitting app and closing windows and give you all the possibilities how and why to do that. But here we'll just use the app menu and press quit to fully close the app. Now there is keyboard shortcut for this red button as well. It's always command W. So in pages here, if I go to file and look at close, you can see it's command W. That will close the current window. But it works in other apps too. For example in Finder, I press Command W and it will close this window as well. And the same thing in Safari and any other app. So in almost all cases, Command W is the same as using the red button. But you should also note that if you have a window open with multiple tabs, with either documents, tap in Finder or in Safari, the red button closes the entire window, including all of these tabs. But if you want to close just a tab, you would click the close button in the tab. But note that the shortcuts has changed. If I have multiple tabs open in a window, command W becomes a closed tab command, instead of closing the whole window. And if I want to close the whole window, I need to press shift command W. Now let's move on on the yellow button. The yellow button is called the minimize button and it does the obvious thing. It shrinks the window down to the dock. Usually it goes here on the right side. I can click on it and bring it back. But you have some options in system preferences when it comes to minimize. If you go to dock and menu bar, make sure you have selected dock and menu bar here on the left. And then you can set the effect to be used when minimizing. So I can change from a genie effect to a scale effect. Choose whatever style you prefer. But what is more interesting is that you can minimize windows into the application icon. So if I minimize it now, it doesn't go to the right side of the dock, but it minimizes under the app icon. So I can go right click the icon and I see that the minimized window is right here. I click on it and it brings it back. Now there is also a keyboard shortcut for minimize. So go to window menu and you will see minimize here at the top. It's command M. So you can use command M instead of clicking the yellow button. Note that if you have multiple windows open, you can minimize them all if you use the option key and click on the yellow icon. It's just like you could press the red button and option key to close all the windows. But there is even easier way to get all the windows out of the way. And that is to simply hide them. Press command H or use the app menu on top and select hide. This hides the entire app instantly and then you can bring it back really easily with a single click on the icon in the dock. In most cases, command H for height is preferable over minimize. Now let's look at the most complex of all buttons, the green button. This is sometimes called the zoom button or even maximize button, which is not correct. More accurate is to call it a full screen button. So in macOS Big Sur, if you move your cursor to the green button, you will automatically get this pop-up list here. If not, you can click and hold for a second and this list will appear. You can see there is a lot of things that the green button can do. 
But by default, if I just ignore this and click the green button, what it will do is enter the full screen mode. So full screen mode gets rid of the menu bar at the top, the dock at the bottom and usually even the toolbar at the top of the app. Now to exit full screen, you can use the green button again. So that's kind of what it does by default. There is also a keyboard shortcut for that, which is usually in the view menu. In most apps, it's Ctrl Command F. But the green button does other things as well. For example, I can use split view instead of full screen view, by tiling to the left or right of the screen. So if I tile this window to the left, I'm asked to pick another window to view on the right. So this is how you get into split view. Now you also get options here at the bottom to move the window to another display if you have more than one display attached to your Mac. Or if you have an iPad nearby and you have sidecar enabled, you will get the option to move that window there and use the iPad as another display. So all that can be accessed through the green button. But the green button does more than that, because if you hold the option key down and move your cursor over it, instead of full screen, there will be zoom and you also have these little arrows pointing to the left and right for moving the windows. So what zoom means? Well, people usually think that zoom is the same as maximize on windows and it will take the window to the largest size for the screen, but that's not what happens at all. Look what actually happens when I use the zoom option for this finder window. You could see it actually shrinks that window. What zoom does is to enlarge the window to the maximum size needed to contain all of the content according to the app's definition of all the content. So here in Finder, there are just few icons, so it resizes the window to fit these icons. In Pages, if I use the green button with option key down for zoom, what it will does, it will resize the window so it's a perfect width for the fit of the page. And there is still one remaining question. How can I actually maximize the window to fill the entire screen? It has nothing to do with the green button. You can just double click on any corner of a window and it will snap to the corner of the screen. If you double click the corner by holding option key, you will get maximized window. Now the green button with the option key also gives you the opportunity to move the window to the left side or right side of the screen. So when I select that, what it does is that it resizes the window to perfectly fit the left half of the screen. Or now I can move it to the right side of the screen and it does that. Note that there will be a revert option once you have used one of these commands. Honestly I like to use this instead of split view, because it perfectly fits the half of the screen and I'm not losing access to menu bar and dock icons. But I want to finish this video with a quick tip. There is also one option you can set to the title bar area. You can perform actions by double click the top of the window. If you go to system preferences and then back to dock and menu bar, there is the option for double click a windows title bar 2, you have to tick it on and then you can select to do zoom or minimize. So I will set it to minimize and double click will shrink that window into the dock. And that's all about red, yellow and green buttons on windows on the Mac. I hope you learned something new and I will see you in the next video with more tips and tutorials.